And the one idea I wanted to start with was, would you rather be right or happy? Would you rather be right or happy? And then let's go into that together, to the meaning of that, so deeply, so fully, you know, let's just have total, you know, devotion to going into that experience of that. And so, we can see, first of all, if there's any ways that we try to make exceptions to that. And that's good, too, because we have to be honest. We have to be, have a lot of self-honesty to s look at where, where, if we can agree we would rather be happy than right, then we can start to take a look at any thoughts, bring them into awareness, bring them to the light of anything that we want to be right about in terms of this world. And I think, you know, we can go a long way into that experience we want just from that, if we're really honest, if we, if we really put all of our cards on the table and we don't keep any tucked under or stuffed back there and behind us or whatever, we just get all those cards out. So I just want to start off, that's our intention, I want to start off with an invitation to do that. Let's do that together. Does everyone want to do that? Are you with me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we can start to clarify, would I rather be right or happy? Would I rather be right about my identity in this world, or would I rather be happy? Would I rather be right about the, e the way that the ego set up this whole cosmos, or would I rather be happy? Would I rather be right about any opinion that I hold, any opinion that I hold, or would I rather be happy? Would I rather be right about the past, or would I rather be happy? Any of these that I'm mentioning, hopefully one will start to trigger some emotion would I rather be right about my mother or my father or my children or be happy? You know, you can start to fill in the blanks of seeing that, that this whole category of, of being right, we're not really talking about what A Course in Miracles calls right-mindedness, because that has a lot to do with happiness, but we're talking about right about a specific judgment about knowing something about anything in this world as if we actually could know anything specific about a meaningless world. About from last night and what was going on here today, that things were breaking, it was just like a, a plethora of things, you know, from alternators to car batteries to water, you know, pipes, you know, just Blah, 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 a van, you know, stuck in the middle of a driveway, da, 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 da. And, and Suzanne was just saying, she said, I'm actually really just feeling that, that none of that, none of that matters, and that this is simply a call into prayer. Uh, she said, I just want to join with you and link with you that, that what I'm feeling is right, because I seem to get a lot of people now that are knocking on my door and saying, there's a problem, there's a problem, there's a problem, 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 you know, there's a lot of problems, danger, there's problems. And what I'm feeling is, this is just a call into prayer. Yeah. And, and I said, absolutely, it, we were only on the phone for 10 minutes, but I, I talked about uh, Mary Baker Eddy, briefly some of you know Christian science and everything, and it's amazing to me that I can go around the world and People go, well, you know, about that Christian science, and, you know, they don't believe in medicine, and they let little children die without getting the medication and everything, and I'll just go, really? Is that what Mary Baker Eddy means to you? Is that what Christian science means to you? And they say, yeah. And I say, oh, no, no, no. It's all the whole teachings of Christian science are pray first. Pray first. 
turn to God first, not second, not third. All of this wanting to be right, all of this seeming to know something about medicine and bodies and treatments uh, and how parts of the body work together and the entire medical model is, is wanting to be right instead of happy. And pray first is saying, I deserve happiness and I, I know the direction that my mind needs to go in. And I think Suzanne and I just totally linked up into that because she said, that's exactly what I'm feeling and that's exactly how I want to spend this moment and this day. Not in logical analysis of what's going wrong. And this is Lesson 79 and 80 from the Course. You know, let me recognize the problem so it can be solved. That's 79. And then Lesson 80, let me recognize my problems have been solved. Doesn't that sound like enlightenment? Doesn't that sound like that's coming from the power and the glory of the living God? Let me recognize my problems have been solved. And Jesus is telling us that you have to go at it in through 79. He doesn't leave 80 just hanging there. It's like the approach is coming first to let me recognize the problem. And how much hum humbleness and, and, and deep sincerity it takes to start to admit I don't have relationship problems, I don't have financial problems, I don't have health issues, I don't have issues with the planet, with the, the atmosphere, with, I have no issues with pollution, I have no issues with politics, I have no issues with governments. You know, to actually come to start to, to say that all of those things are just mere distractions away from, oh, I've got a perceptual problem and I have to see the problem exactly as it is before I can accept the solution. So this is where we come together and, and I think we can have a really valuable time together if we come to an agreement that we're going to just put out on the table what formerly we had believed to be the truth with a willingness to say, I would rather be happy than to hold on to, to keep in consciousness these ideas and beliefs. That's what we're really here for. I can feel it. I can yeah. feel the energy behind that. Yeah, let's just take a look at that as like a, a temptation or a trick to, to guard away from that. Like when I was saying before, would you rather be right about the, the way that the ego set up the cosmos or be happy? Now, we have to take a closer look at, for a moment, how the ego set the cosmos up. That's why the Course in Miracles is such a great tool, because it says, oh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you exactly how. And the idea that, that we can have beings that seem to be outside of us, <laughs> who have different thoughts than us, different beliefs than us, and a different mind <laughs> than us. That's the way mm -hmm. the ego set the world up. Mm -hmm. And so when we are tempted to believe, well, they want to be right, then we've already fallen into being, wanting to be right about the way the ego set the world up, as if these characters are really out there and they've got minds of their own and thoughts of their own and even a will yeah. apart from us. Mm -hmm. So that's the trick. That's, that's where the humbleness starts to come in like, okay, this is the way that it seems and am I going to cling to being right about that perception or am I willing to be happy? And that's where the practice comes in. Yeah, it's a much larger context. As long as we freeze it down into like people and opinions and I like what they said but I didn't like what they said or right and wrong, even in terms of morality, I think a lot of us 
you know, have, have struggled with this morality thing, right behaviors, wrong behaviors, you know, when someone says, that's just not right, <laughs> that's just not right. And then it gets finer and finer and finer. I remember one time we were in Australia and somebody was talking and, and somebody said, you know, that's off. That's off. And I said, well, let's, let's just explore what off is. And, and who is the one that can say that's off? You know, that, that's how deep it goes, because we have to be able to bring every scrap, every thought, every opinion that's part of that wanting to be right about the, the separation, right about separate minds, private minds, private thoughts, personalities, persons, all of that is part of a, a giant a cobweb system that, that has an arrogance about it, that really denies our divinity. And it seems easy to lose track of the big picture and to get caught into the little blinders, the microcosm. And that's where we have to go much deeper into consciousness, much deeper into mind, to actually have that experience. That we're, that we're desiring, that freedom. Yeah, and I think to simplify it, when we look at that whole category of trying to be right about anything in the world, it all comes back to linear time. I, I remember going through the Course and I, I'm going through all these chapters and it's getting later and later in the text. And then I remember looking at the name of the subsection in the chapter, and it said, the immediacy of salvation. And I was like, whoa, the immediacy. It wasn't talking workbook lessons in there, it wasn't talking practice even, it was a room. The immediacy of salvation. And he says, be not content with future happiness, for it is not your just reward, for you have cause for freedom now. And I was just, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Be not content with future happiness. That's like another temptation. It used to sound pretty good to us. Hope for the future, a better life in the future. You know, it used to be something that we were hanging on to. Okay, it's going to get better. I'll be happy when, mm, I can't wait till this situation or circumstance. And then we're starting to realize that it's our perception, our cracked ego perception that is the problem. And as Einstein said, you cannot solve the problem at the level of the problem. We are not going to be able to solve perceptual problem with specifics. There's no amount of getting it right personally, doing the right thing enough as a person, even if you do it for days or weeks or months or years or decades, it's still not going to ever reach that because we need a mind solution for the problem because the problem's not in the form and in the specifics. It's like a giant distractive device. Remember those kaleidoscopes you used to play with kids where you could look through them and, and turn them and whoo, 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 the colors and the patterns were just dazzling. And that's what this world is. It's a dazzling kaleidoscope tempting us to find the right scenario, the right event, the right circumstance. And no matter how many times we twist, and we just can't find it. So this is really, to me, an invitation. You know, I could see where I, I would have to be, accept that I was wrong about everything that I perceived in form, about every opinion, about every judgment. I couldn't cling and say, well, that, that served me and that helped me. I oh, empty, empty about absolutely everything. <laughs>